Hi everyone and welcome back to this YouTube series about wall modeled LES. Now if you recall, in the last video we finished with defining what wall modeled LES is. And in this, we are going to try to look at what type of wall modeled LES approaches there are and we're going to try to sort of classify them based on their properties. In this regard, what should be said is that there is unfortunately no consensus in the literature of how exactly to classify all of these approaches. So to some extent, what I'm going to talk about is going to be sort of opinionated. That being said, I stick quite closely to the review paper by Larson and his colleagues, which I've referred to quite a bit in the previous video and will continue referring to here. So at least this is not something I've created personally, but also that some other practitioners in the field have stuck to. All right, now that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so as a first level of classification of all wall model LES approaches, we're going to divide them into two types. One type is going to be called wall stress modeling and the other hybrid LES RANs. So what is the difference between these two approaches? Well, it's the answer to the following question. What is the extent of the LES domain? Looking first at wall stress modeling, we see that the LES domain occupies the whole computational domain all the way down to the wall. The wall model itself and its equations live in this separate box here, and then the LES solution and the wall modeling solution interact with each other in a particular way, which we're going to talk about in a lot of detail later. Now, instead turning to hybrid LES RANs, here the situation is different, and the domain is split into two subdomains, one can say. One is the LES subdomain, which occupies the majority of the computational domain, and then there's the RANs domain, which occupies the inner layer of a turbulent boundary layer. And between them we can say that there's a certain interface. So the majority of this series is going to be focused on wall stress modeling. So only in this video we're going to talk about hybrid LES RANs. So I'm going to start with talking about that set of methods first. So what is the basic idea of hybrid LES RANs? Well, the idea is that the RANs is much cheaper to solve for than the LES near the wall. Why? Well, the reason is that in RANs, we don't really have to care that much about the resolution of the grid in the directions parallel to the wall. The only thing we need to do in RANs to fully resolve a turbulent boundary layer is to have a nice gradual decrease of uh, wall normal extent of the cell towards the wall. So depending on the RANs model you use, you might want to have even Y plus one or maybe something a little bit larger. So based on that, we can introduce the savings, right? So we can have a large grid for the LES, so something which is decent enough to resolve uh, boundary layer thickness delta. And then below, well, we can just keep the same wall parallel dimensions of the cells. So the only thing we need to do is, as I said, refine the grid towards the wall. So this is the general idea. Now, there are two classes of methods within hybrid LES RANs that we're going to distinguish. The first method is zonal. And uh, the idea here is that the location of, of this interface is explicitly defined by the user. So basically, you say to the solver that, okay, up to this point, you're going to solve RANs, and then above that, you're going to solve LES equations, okay? Now, the other class of approaches is the seamless approach. And here, the idea is that you don't explicitly say where the interface is, but instead you get that as a byproduct of the solution itself or the grid size, typically both, okay? So the most important class of seamless method, I would say is DES and its variants. So detached uh, eddy simulation, delayed detached eddy simulation and improved detached eddy simulation. Um, simply because those methods are found in many, many codes and therefore there's an opportunity to use them for wall modeling as well. Now, it's very easy to get confused about detached eddy simulation and how it fits into the wall modeling framework. So I would like to speak about that a little bit so that no confusion is introduced here. So what's important to understand is that in classical DES, the location of the interface 
is at the edge of a turbulent boundary layer. Okay, so what that means is that the whole boundary layer is modeled with RANS. In other words, the turbulent scales uh, of a size delta are not resolved but are modeled with RANS. So this is not wall modeled LES, right? Because in wall modeled LES, we commit to resolving these scales. So for classical DS, such flows as channel flow or a flat plate turbulent boundary layer become pure RANS simulations. You don't resolve any turbulent motions there. Everything is modeled. So this, of course, is a much lower fidelity approach, and it's also therefore much cheaper. And that is the reason why DES and its improved variants are much more widespread in industry right now than what model LES is. However, since in DES, the location of the RAN or the split between the RANS and LES domain is more or less controlled by the grid and probably the wall distance as well, it is possible to construct a grid in such a manner that this implicit separation between the LES and RANS parts is going to be located somewhere in the overlap layer, okay? So then we're not applying DES in the classical sense, but instead we're shifting the interface down towards the wall so that the RANS only occupies the inner layer. And in that case, we can say that we're applying DES as a wall model. So. To reiterate, this is not the classical way DS is applied, but you can do that. Uh, so in that case, it becomes a seamless hybrid LES RANS wall modeling method. Okay, I hope that makes things a bit more clear. So on this slide, I just want to provide some literature on using DS and its uh, modifications as a wall model. So there's this classical paper by Nikitin and colleagues uh, from 2000. And then this paper, I believe, introduces IDDES and they show that it has wall model modeling capabilities. Finally, the third paper is an example of a zonal approach, which we haven't talked that much about. And this is a paper by Temmerman and colleagues from 2005. So I just wanted to provide at least one reference to a zonal approach so you can take it from there. Okay, now to Walstress modeling approaches. In this video, we are going to discuss them only briefly because Walstress modeling theory is going to be the topic of the next two or maybe even three videos. In that discussion, it will become apparent that when the LES domain stretches all the way to the wall, the appropriate way to account for the unresolved inner layer is to provide the correct value of the wall shear stress to our wall as a boundary condition. Now, the difference between the wall stress modeling classes is then how this correct value of tau wall is computed. And we distinguish two sets of approaches. One set is based on RANS equations, and the other set is basically all the other existing approaches. So, as it even implies, for RANS-based methods, the equations inside the wall model are based on RANS. So some of them solve full RANS equations, leading to PDE-based wall stress modeling models. And some of them introduce uh, certain simplifications, leading to ODE formulations or algebraic formulations. Now, the crucial point is, as discussed before, that the discretization of any of these equations happens separately from the discretization of the LES domain. So if all of this feels a little bit confusing right now, it's completely okay. Because as I said, we're going to go into the details of all of this uh, in the next two or three videos. So I'm pretty sure everyone is going to be on board. In the material that follows, we're going to focus on RANS-based wall stress models. So it stands to reason to also give some uh, links to literature on the other approaches. So here I, I provide three such references. So the first one is the work by Niku. I hope I pronounced that correctly. 
um, from 2001, I believe, yes. Uh, and that's a wall model which is based on control theory. Uh, I don't believe it has gotten any large spread use, but uh, this paper is typically cited when you want to mention an alternative method, so to speak. Uh, the second reference is to the work of Bose and Moen from uh, 2014. And uh, they introduced a so-called dynamic slip boundary condition, uh, which acts as a wall model. Um, and that has been used in quite a bit of papers and introduced into some codes. So that's definitely something to look into uh, in terms of alternative approaches. Uh, finally, uh, the last link uh, by Yang and colleagues um, is actually about a wall model based uh, on a neural network, um, which is, of course, uh, something which is very hype right now, using data-driven approaches to derive uh, new models everywhere and including wall modeling. So I'm sure there will be more of that in the nearest future. Now, in conclusion. Let's look at the whole classification tree that we have introduced. Now, a natural question is, of course, which of these models is better or which one should one use? Unfortunately, there is no simple answer to that question and all the models have their pluses and minuses. For example, consider zonal and seamless hybrid LES RANS methods. In a zonal method, the minus is that you have to a priori set where the interface between the LES and RANS is. But on the other hand, once you've done that, you are sure that the equations are going to be solved where they should be solved. In contrast, in a seamless method, you do not really have to make that preparatory work, although one can maybe say that you still have to think about it when you construct the grid, but nevertheless, one can sort of hope that the algorithm itself is going to figure out the correct location where the resolution is enough to actually start an LES and where it should be RANS. On the other hand, maybe that will fail. So you will unintentionally get uh, LES regime somewhere where you don't want it, or the RANS regime will stretch itself beyond the inner layer, therefore sabotaging the idea that you're doing wall modeled LES. Now, we are going to focus a lot on RANS based wall stress modeling approaches. And the reason for that is that that is what I focused on in my research and work. Also, that is what is used in the majority of the works on wall model LES, so that does justify it from a different perspective as well. In the next video, we're going to go back to the basics and look at the LES equations. We're going to do that in order to see how the wall shear stress style wall arises as a natural boundary condition for wall stress modeling. If you like this content and you want to make sure that you're not going to miss the next video, you can subscribe to the channel and like this video. Bye for now.